Alrighty, what is going on everybody? Of course, my name is Blitzwinger, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome on back to, of course, another LEGO set review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at my very first ever LEGO Ninjago Masters of Spin Jitsu review, and we're going to be taking a look at specifically the set known as the Nindroid Mech Dragon. It is a 691 piece set, which means that, of course, it is quite the large set indeed. As you can see, it comes with some pretty, pretty cool things inside of it, including, of course, the Nindroid Mech Dragon itself. Itself. A nice little uh, cart right here as well for Mr. Sensei Garmadon and Lloyd, so that's pretty awesome. We also have Evil Wu and some Nindroid characters, so all in all, a pretty awesome package. Now, I will mention, guys, that typically this set is, I think, $90, but if you live in Canada, make sure to check out your local Walmarts, because in my local Walmart, they had four of these th uh, sets for clearance for $39.99. So I would absolutely recommend to check that uh, your Walmarts, and if they have that, that's a pretty awesome deal because if you can get this set for 40 bucks I mean that's pretty awesome a 691 piece set is a pretty awesome deal indeed but of course additionally to the value it's also important to consider the set itself so why don't we go ahead assemble this thing and take a look at the goodies inside Alrighty guys, so let's begin by taking a look at the little cart that comes along with this set, or the buggy if you'd like to call it, and uh, it definitely is a, a secondary piece to the entire set, it almost like, you know, the, the Nindroid Mech Dragon is kind of the main course, but this is the appetizer, and I have to say it's a pretty good appetizer indeed, because I think that all in all it is really, really interesting and unique. What I love the most about picking up a toy line like the Ninjago stuff from LEGO is that I feel like when they when they're not restricted by a license they're able to make some really really imaginative and just very unique things and this is no different I really like this buggy I think it's very very simple and straightforward but it also has some really cool elements to it like for example the use of the katana swords right up at the front here as almost little uh, dirt breakers or like as if they would get rid of debris or like as they're slicing through the jungle this would like be cutting stuff it's just really 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 cool we see some nice touches with a little bit of sticker work right up at the front here. One thing that I was surprised by is actually the lack of stickers in this set. There really aren't all that many, which is very, very nice. You can also tell that I've been uh, driving this thing <laughs> in several different spots because it's collected some dust or some debris over here on the rubber tires, which is a bit unfortunate, but... Speaking of those tires, those tires are exceptionally well done as you can see. Not only do you get the actual tire, which is made out of rubber to allow you to kind of drive over terrain, which is nice, but you get the golden uh, wheel right here, or the uh, hubcaps themselves, and then the black hubcaps, uh, which is really nice. It kind of brings the whole piece together very, very nicely indeed. On the back here, we have some pretty lovely stuff because we have these uh, lights that kind of look a little obscure. They kind of look like they're uh, mobile, and there's a reason for that because if we rotate the vehicle sideways, we'll notice that when we push one of those in these cannons come up and of course basically those act as a little bit almost like a missile system that you would uh, have present like as you're driving along uh oh there's trouble weapons up and of course you could do that with both of them you can see it slides right back into position when you do that which is nice so we can go ahead and uh, flip up the other cannons right here as well which is awesome just a really really clever little design and something that is just really nice to see I think it works very very well and it's just really sweet to see now of course I, I noticed that if you push like hard enough you can get the missiles to move a little like there we go if you push hard enough they will fly off but sometimes it feels like it's almost a little too much of a push if you know what I mean like it feels like oh, okay I feel like I'm gonna break things now I feel like I'm gonna break things now so I'm not too comfortable with it I, I kind of prefer to use it just as a method of just like hey flip up missiles and then pretend like there's a laser coming through which is some nice play features but if you really want you can keep pushing down on it and then it will release and launch these things quite far away as well because the little uh, pushing mechanism is present which is very nice to see but that is not all the artillery that this thing has because we can see this really intricate system right up at the top here as well which does rotate around and that's uh, really really nice as you can see there's also a seat right there so you can go ahead and house an actual lego minifigure uh, up in that spot which is really cool and there we go we've got ourselves a pilot now sensei garmadon is now in place and he's ready to operate this thing as you can see the interesting thing about it is that the actual pilot or the driver of this particular buggy actually has to be kind of laying down so it's not a very not 
sitting down like this as we would typically see because if we had it like that the problem is that then you can't bring down the actual windshield you could keep it up like this maybe you like that look but the way that it is supposed to actually be displayed is having the driver laid down and then the actual hubcap or the actual cover goes over them like so and then ladies and gents of course next up it is time to take a look at the mech dragon itself and this thing is a behemoth of a piece i mean it is absolutely ginormous as you can see it's got a pretty ridiculous length to it if you include it from tail all the way to mouth i mean it is a very 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 large toy so for those of you that kind of you know hope when you get a big box under your christmas tree or something like that if you got this thing you wouldn't be disappointed because the assembly process is super duper fun but then the final product it really really shines I think that this is an exceptional build and again like I kind of said with the buggy I think that this is a perfect example of what the Lego team can do when they are not restricted by any licensing uh, kind of agreements or anything like that and they can just do whatever they can come up with just the craziest things they can and this thing is just exceptionally cool looking it has all of these spikes and swords it looks like it's literally built out of just weapons like it literally looks like something that was assembled out of a whole bunch of different types of blades it almost kind of reminds me of the shredder from the brand new tmnt cartoon um film if you remember where he had like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of knife all, knives all around him this is the same kind of thing we have all these blades these uh, wings or at least that's what they're supposed to be as you can see they have these ginormous blades coming out of them the actual wings look like ginormous blades these things look like blades i mean it is armed to the teeth the claws there are an absolutely fantastic and fun build to it just exceptionally, exceptionally well done. Now, uh, there are some detail work, or there is, sorry, some detail work that is done through sticker work. You'll notice right here on the head, for example, there's quite a bit of it as well as in the inside of the mouth. They do a good job of trying to create kind of an eyes, and then this is a mouth with teeth peeking through, which is great. We have some detail work right up here as well, and it is also present on the sides. Uh, with some additional stickering work as well as the of course opposite side has the matching type of uh, designs going on which is really cool but other than that it really isn't all that many stickers like this is sticker work right here as well but other than that i mean it is all regular pieces and lego pieces that create different textures and patterns on this thing one thing that i was concerned about as i began assembling this guy is that it was going to feel a lot like a technic build uh, and it kind of looks a little bit very technique in terms of like you know having so many stud components and such but i think that it is noticeable to be a technic piece only when you flip it over like when you flip it over you can kind of see all these gears that are hidden away all these pins and such uh, all these holes and such uh, and it becomes a little bit more obvious however when you keep it in its upright position in its correct position i guess you really don't notice many of those elements which is something that i was very very pleasantly surprised by so i will stand by this as an absolutely fantastic build and design design now the actual building process for this thing probably took me uh, I, I would imagine maybe maybe right around an hour or so then again i usually when i build these things i usually watch a show or something like that as well so maybe it took me longer than it usually should take a person but that was i think about the build time that it took me to actually assemble it now uh one thing that i had a concern another concern about is that this piece right here would feel very hollow like as you can see for for pretty much the majority of the build up until I think the actual last bag uh, this is what you have here and I was like that's very weird there's a giant hole right here and that just looks awkward but somehow they managed to take these very simple pieces which are very 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 simple I mean this is probably I don't know maybe seven or eight pieces maybe ten max and they just mount onto these little pegs and once you do that you close them up and it kind of just closes up that whole design like it's still present of course and you can kind of still know but somebody who isn't paying attention to it or somebody who who didn't build this i don't think would typically notice that which is really really cool and i think that that's a really lovely element that it's not a noticeable thing but it is certainly there so just wanted to mention that as a bit of a concern now that area may be open in the instructions at least i don't recall seeing it uh, that way but that's what i've been doing sometimes is because you can take some of the ninjoids and you can actually house them in here almost like um you know those like star wars droid sets where the droids come out of this little thing and then they all kind of fall out almost like a, out of a shelf kind of thing so you can do the same kind of thing and have your additional ninjoids in there which is really lovely so you can kind of have an extra riding spot or a few riding spots for some of the minions which is really really cool 
Then let's get our way to the back, which is of course the tail. Not particularly probably interesting, but I really love the way that this thing comes together. It's built with these very unique pieces that I've never seen before. Now again, I'm still relatively new to LEGO in comparison to most people who have been fans for a long time in terms of just, I, I used to be a fan as I was a kid, then it was very difficult to be a fan because it's just so expensive. It still is expensive, of course, uh, but then I've been getting more and more into it lately. However, of course, the cool thing about this build is that it uses these special pieces and you have this uh, gear up at the top here, which allows you to swing the tail. But the cool thing is that these pieces allow you for this almost like snake-like motion for the tail, which you can see right here, because it folds on itself right here, here, and at the actual front. So you get this really like unique motion of a snake-like, uh, features which is really cool it's almost like you know those toys at the dollar store where you can buy like a snake and it's like made out of wood but it kind of moves like a real snake this is the same kind of thing here which is really really sweet and i think that that's a really clever and fun assembly there of course i mentioned before the claws are really impressive as you can see some of them the front pieces actually get a little bit of extra treatment to give them a bit more of a clawed look and more detail the back legs here are a little bit more simplified but the articulation that i mentioned on the back of the figure actually carries through to the front and this is i think my favorite feature of the entire thing. The amount of dynamic posing that you get out of the double ball joints up here is just exceptional. It is just so cool. The way that this joint works is just so fun because it allows you to have these really, really unique poses. Like you could really bring down the head all the way in or bring it all the way up. And then of course the opening mouth helps that because you can get a whole bunch of cool roaring poses or maybe even as he's attacking, maybe something malfunctioned and he attacks a nindroid, he could go ahead and chomp down on one of those. And that's just really cool like this articulation is so so key to making some really lovely poses out of this thing that I really am super duper glad about how this thing comes together now, with all that in mind, let's discuss some of the play features on this thing. So first and foremost, of course, I'm sure that you guys notice these ginormous spinning uh, mechanisms. Well, they actually work on little rubber bands right here on the sides. And the way that it works is by pulling these two purple bits together, so kind of squeezing them uh, almost in a, as if you're using a pair of scissors together. What you're able to do is you're able to create a spinning motion for them. So you kind of pull them together and then let go. And what happens is they have a little gear that moves up and and hits against this gear which is stationary and as it hits against it it forces this thing to spin and as it comes back around it continues to spin which gives it that kind of extra rotation so very very clever design there and again just something that absolutely blew me away because at first I thought oh, okay they're gonna probably just squeeze these together and they're just gonna spin on themselves just around but no it actually seems to be a little bit more clever in terms of the way that it operates with this other gear here which is really really sweet additionally to that you might have noticed the big ginormous cannon in the back here of course that's a firing missile so you you could go ahead and push back on that little tooth right there and that will fire away a Technic kind of a cannon piece. So you could go ahead and fire that off. As you can see that is made out of soft plastic or rubber so it's no danger or anything like that which is lovely. And then we also have an additional storage unit right here which is really really sweet and this was a very pleasant surprise. So for example the idea is that at the very top of the actual uh, dragon here you can actually house your pilot and uh, you could go ahead and of course take the uh, pilot whether it's uh, evil sensei Wu or uh, just a typical nindroid for example you could go ahead and place them into that little canopy right there and they could operate whoops uh, okay there we go you, and they could actually operate the dragon and control the dragon of course and uh, additionally you could remove them just to see the extra detail right there there's almost like a little panel uh, that they would use maybe as like the controls and such but this thing is really cool because it actually pulls right out and it acts as a kind of almost like a mobile jail cell which is really really cool so once they've captured their objective or their uh, target they can trap them in here and then we have this opening mechanism right here and you can see Lloyd is housed inside because they were going of course after the sacred ninja that is Lloyd and uh, once they've captured him they would put him into the cell place him into the mech dragon and away they take off ready guys so next up let's move on to of course the minifigures in this particular set and who better to start with than the one and only Lloyd of course one of the most if not the most I think powerful Ninjago member he is an absolutely stellar character indeed I've been trying to find out more and more about the Ninjago world and he is definitely a great figure to start my collection with because he is of course one of the coolest ninjas of the bunch of course as you can see he's got his patented and uh, at this point I guess somewhat iconic green outfit which looks very very cool along with that he also does sport 
two gold katana swords or katana like swords. You can also see some lovely print work on the torso. And then on the back of the figure, you can see once again some good printing on the torso as well. Some really lovely logos are printed on there as well as the outfit. Nothing on the legs, unfortunately, but I think at this point in time, they weren't really doing any print work on the actual figures. Now, if you're wondering about any other expressions, unfortunately, he doesn't have any other expressions available on the back of his head. It would have been really nice to see some other expressions printed on here, just so we could have a bit more variety. But I guess maybe at this point in time, they weren't really doing that because this is a bit of an older set. Alrighty, so then let's move on, of course, to the master, or of course, the father of Lloyd, and that is the one and only Sensei Garmadon. And as you can see, he is pretty cool looking indeed. Also does support some of the green colors that were present on Lloyd himself. He also does come along with a pretty cool looking staff right there to help him take down some nindroids and uh, bad guys, of course, in the process. It's interesting enough that he does uh, share a pretty similar haircut to, of course, his son, which is also a nice touch, but of course it's grayed out to signify that he's a bit of an older fella. Now, on the back of the figure, we can see a pretty cool print work of a dragon-like motif, and that looks absolutely spectacular. And once again, similarly to Lloyd, also, he does not support any other print work or expressions on the back of his head. So now let's move our way on over to the bad guys of the set, and this is just the default Nindroid character that is available in this particular set. You can see he sports a pretty unique chainsaw-like weapon with an axe handle at the bottom of it too, almost like an energy kind of axe handle, which is pretty sweet. Almost looks like a weapon out of Gears of War or something. But the print work on these guys was just spectacular. I love how you can see a little bit into their anatomy right there, almost like a robotic-like design beneath their actual, um, not zombie, <laughs> beneath their ninja attire, which is pretty sweet. He has a pretty cool helmet as well, which you can indeed remove to reveal a very, very mad and angry expression for this Nindroid. And then when we look on the back of the Nindroid, we can see that there is some additional print work on the actual, of course, head as well. So if you want to display him without that helmet that you saw before, you can go ahead and do that as well, which is a really, really nice alternative. And next up after that, we have General Cryptor, who is, of course, a more higher rank, to general rank, of course, within the Nindroid's army. You can see that he does have some significantly different elements to him, which includes the print work on the chest there, especially on this particular armor piece that isn't present on the other regular Nindroid. We can see that he does come with the exact same type of weapon as well. We see some actual print work right there on the legs, which is nice, as well as the belt continuing onwards to the legs as well. And similarly to the previous Nindroid, we can remove the helmet to reveal a very different expression, which is also really, really nice to see, uh, because again, it gives it a bit more variety to the actual minifigures, which is lovely. And the back of, of course, Mr. Cryptor here also sports some lovely print work on the torso and also, of course, on the actual head right there. So that's nice, kind of revealing some more of the metallic or nindroid-like elements. And I really love how you can see through this little uh, circle right here, you can actually see a shuriken star uh, peeking through, which is really cool, as if it's like a hidden piece of equipment that he hides away. And last, but certainly not least, we have Evil Wu, or of course, Evil Master Wu, who uh, used to be a good guy, but of course takes the role of a bad guy at some point. And as you can see, he is pretty cool looking indeed. I love that epic, epic beard that he's got going on. That thing is just absolutely awesome. He comes with two accessories in the form of a pair of handcuffs to of course try to trap Lloyd or maybe even Garmadon himself. And then of course he also comes with a staff, but his staff is actually black compared to Garmadon's brown staff. So the exact same piece, just a different color. I love some of the lovely details on the print work on the chest piece there or the torso piece because we can see the little W on his belt buckle. Like he definitely likes branding. He's like, yep, I'm gonna put a W on my belt buckle so everybody knows that I'm Master Wu. I also love the print work on the face there because you can see those peeking and blazing red eyes along with also some Nidroid elements peeking through which is really really nice to see. And speaking of those elements we can also see them on the back of the figure because you can see it right there on the left hand side of his head right over here. You can see that there is also some metallic elements peeking through and also on the torso as well and he also similarly has that shuriken like design going on that I previously mentioned with Cryptor or General Cryptor. Alrighty guys so there you have it of course that is the review for the Nindroid Mech Dragon. I am super duper impressed with my very first dive into the Lego Ninjago world. I'm really 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 pleasantly surprised by all the goodies that we got here. Some really 
really cool and imaginative pieces are available in the set and I will definitely stand by making this one of my recommended sets because it is just so much fun, it is so unique, it has so much cool play features to it and displays well as well additionally to just being absolutely fun to play with. So I will definitely stand by as this being one of my personal favorite sets that I currently own in LEGO form. So all that being said of course, thank you guys so very much for watching. Of course have a fantastic day and I will indeed catch you guys next time. Peace out, see you laters, alligators. Bye bye everyone.